Let's talk about something that Paul Feinbaum said, though, before he gets here. We'll ask him about it when he sits down as well. He compared Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. And that wasn't the first time somebody's done that, but I think the actual quote that he had about how those two relate to each other and maybe how Kirby stacks up next to Saban right now, I think it's important. So again, we'll get his take on it when he gets here, but I want to read you this quote. He said, they, being Georgia, are what Alabama was about five or six years ago. He went on to say they have it because they recruited at such a high level. So what do the numbers tell us here about this statement? Kirby, if he wins a national championship this season at Georgia, will have won three national titles in four years. Nick Saban, he did that from 2009 to 2012. Three natties in four years. The last three years for Kirby Smart, he's gone 42-2, and two, so only two losses. So focus on that losses number because the season length has changed a little bit. But Nick Saban, his first three years of that title run, of that four title run, rather, from 2009-2012, first three years of that, he had four losses. So take of that as you will. We're kind of splitting hairs there when it comes to the losses number, but overall, it's fair to comp those two and to comp those runs rather when it comes to what they've done from a losses perspective. At a macro level, both recruit Trump de la Creme. All right, like both are living in the nicest neighborhoods when it comes to who they are recruiting. Pretty much at, at worst, it's going to be a number three ranked class for a Georgia right now, it's pretty much the same deal for Alabama. They pretty much live in that top two range, if not the top class. Kirby, I think, absolutely can be on the same level as Nick Saban. Like, accolades are obviously going to tell the story, but look at how they're trending. Nick Saban didn't win his first national championship until his 10th season as a head coach. His 10th season. Now, Kirby Smart, Granted, probably inherited a better situation at Georgia to have his first head coaching job, but he got his first national title in year six. Nick Saban coached until his 70s. Kirby Smart right now, he's 48. Let's assume he's got around 20 more years to coach college football. You tell him he can't make up some ground on Nick Saban's seven national titles when Kirby's got two right now. Probably has had the best team in college football the last three years if he was able to stay with a healthy roster, maybe they win a third last year. I'm just saying, I think the thought process around this, I understand it's a little bit shocking to the senses to compare someone to Nick Saban already, but Kirby Smart is trending in that direction. Like it or not, that's the truth. Now, here's the deal. This year is going to be a great test for Kirby Smart at Georgia in relation to what Nick Saban did at Alabama. And what I mean by that is every single year at Alabama, things changed. That's how it is in college football, but especially at Alabama. You saw a really high degree of turnover at the coordinator position. It felt like every other year you had a new coordinator. One, that's tough to recruit with. Two, that's tough to build with when it comes to being able to have continuity for the guy still on your roster. But every single year, Bama was Bama. Why? Because it was Nick Saban. Take it a step further. The game changed a lot when Nick Saban was the head coach at Alabama. From the BCS to the playoff, things changed quite a bit while he was there. He continued to evolve, to adapt the way the game was played. Schematically, up-tempo offenses, that became more in vogue. So what does Saban do? He adapts. Saban was a master at adapting. Kirby Smart, this upcoming season, is going to have to continue to adapt. He's won two national titles. He's done both of them in the four-team playoff model. He's done both of them with Stetson Bennett at quarterback. He's done both of them with Todd Munkin as his O.C., now, Georgia hasn't won a national title with their current set of circumstances with Carson Beck at quarterback and Mike Bobo as his OC. But I do think it's worth noting all the staff changes they've had at Georgia are going to add another degree of difficulty to what they want to do in 2024. Now, when I say degree of difficulty, I'm not speaking to the caliber of hires. I'm speaking to the chemistry you have to have within your staff to compete at the highest level. You got to all be on the same page. And so my point in saying all this is, Nick Saban had to continue to evolve, and Alabama had to evolve with him. Kirby Smart, I believe, is doing that. I believe will do that. But this year, with all the staff changes from running back coach to receiver coach, when you have success, guys get better jobs on your staff. And I promise you, Kirby Smart is happy for that. He's happy for those guys. But at the same time, like it presents some challenges for him in 2024. This will be a really good gauge for us and really interesting for us to see how he takes that head on. But I think it's also worth noting now as we compare Nick Saban and Kirby, 
people were having the same conversation that we're about to have about Saban and Kirby, about Bear Bryant and Nick Saban. And what I mean by that is the era. The era was different for Bear Bryant and Nick Saban. Obviously, that's a pretty extreme example, but I think for, for Kirby Smart and what his college football is going forward now, if he were to win multiple national titles, do we grade him on a curve? If he gets to five, are we saying, well, yes, but he did it in the NIL era, in the portal era, in the era of the expanded playoff, in the era of Texas and Oklahoma and the SEC, and who knows who else and what other conference? Like, I'm curious how that conversation evolves. But I'll just say, this is the year for Kirby Smart to really put a dent in that conversation with the comp between him and Nick Saban, to really gain some ground and have three and four years and have that discussion around, did he do it in a more difficult era? Remains to be seen, but I don't think what Paul Feinbaum is saying is far off by any stretch. Now, the accolades, again, he's still got to catch up to him from a national titles perspective, but how he has talent and how he recruits, he's always going to be in that discussion to win a national championship as long as they compete on the recruiting trail at that level. So excited to talk to Paul about that here in a matter of minutes, but it's very... Uh, I think as college football fans, we're very lucky to be in an era where you have the GOAT of GOATs and Nick Saban. Outside of college football, I think you can make a case for him being the best coach of any sport, period, for what he's done so far and what he's done in his career. And then following up that era, you have Kirby Smart starting his run of potentially trying to be the GOAT in his own right. So it's a lot of fun for us college football fans, but curious to hear your thoughts there. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.